Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the Apache and we're looking at the weapons page and its sub pages. This page allows us to monitor the status of and change parameters for our various weapon systems. So first we need to enter the relevant screen. So from either MPD and either crew station, click weapon. We're shown here the main base page. Here is a top-down view of our aircraft, front, back, left and right, and showing representations of the statuses of our weapon systems. First, this displays our current selected site of this crew member, currently HMD, and we could change that with FCR, HMD, Link or TADS, and I'm going to change that to Fire Control Radar, and that will put me through to the Fire Control Radar screen, so let's just go back, Fire Control Radar. Regards our laser, or in this case, our laser detection system, LST, laser spot track, to detect other people's laser. Which associated laser code is it? Currently A, and obviously we'll come back to that. Next, our safe or arm status. Currently we are safe, we are now master arm. Note, if we have a weapon actioned, let me just action a gun, it has a slightly different symbol action. Next, our current acquisition source, of which there are many, but defaulted currently to the TAD sensor. Next, our laser range finder and designator, currently on code A, and we'll come back to that as well. Work our way over to the left, bore sight. This is a sub page that allows us to align our helmet mounted display known as the IHADS that's covered in a different video, so we'll skip over that. We have a grayscale as well to configure the brightness of our IHADs. We have the current status of our chaff dispensing system. We have 30 chaff cartridges and the system is armed. It can be armed and disarmed in a different page. I'm going to skip over these bottom guys because they're quite complex. So next let's go to train. Training mode on or off not functional as of March 2024 which is obviously when we're making this video. Next is an interesting one. When we're using our laser range finder do we want the determined range to be based on the first return or the last return? There will be several returns and which we choose could influence the quality of the ranging. I'm going to bring Matrix and Push in to explain further. As you fire the laser, it may not be exactly settled on the target that you want. You mean the system may need to fine track a little bit. So if you use the first pulse, you may find there's an error from scattering or maybe aligned with the wrong target and you'll get the wrong range. You've got the option to go for the last pulse, which is when you might have the sight settled on the target a bit better. Uh, and you might get a more accurate range from that. If your target is trying to mask itself behind, say, a tree or something like that, if you do the first pulse, you'll get the range return from the tree. But if you do the last pulse, it will return from the target. Back to our acquisition source, currently TADS. We can change it here. There are various ways of changing it in the Apache, and this is one way of doing it. If we click here, ones available are, that I know of, off by heart, pilot helmet sight, or gunner's helmet mounted sight, or we could fix it to the datum of the aircraft and slightly down, but we'll leave it in TADS for now. Next, we should delve into the symbology of the weapons on this top-down display. What we can see is we have the gun powered on, and the amount of rounds there. We can see that the starboard and port inner pylons, we have rocket pods here and here, and that we have radar-guided Hellfires here, that's the Lima model, and laser-guided variants here on the outer pylon, that's the Kilo model. Now we can get more information on this symbology as well as extra symbology if we either press the gun, missile or rocket button here, for instance that, and or we action that particular weapon with the weapons action gun, rocket and missile. So let's start with the gun. I'm going to action the gun pip you can see that it's actioned because it's solid here we can change the burst limit the amount of rounds that will be fired from the gun before it stops firing as you have your finger on the trigger 10 20 50 or 100 or no limit so it will just fire until it runs out of rounds also it's mode it can be a normal which is normal operation the gun will point wherever the acquisition source is or you could fix it in a mode where it basically points forward and slightly down like a fixed gun that will be in norm most of the time. Right, let's unwaz our gun, and next let's waz our rockets. Uh, we can see here, with relevance to both pods, because both are highlighted, in those pods we have a total of 24 
rockets with VAT warhead 6IL, that's an illumination warhead, and 14 rockets with that warhead there, which I'm pretty sure is a high explosive uh, warhead. We can change which it is that we want to fire by actually selecting on it there. Of the selected warhead type, how many rockets do we want to fire in a salvo? We can change it there and we get an option of 1, 2, 4, 8, 12, 24 or all of them. Note that when we select a certain warhead, it will also show the warhead type there. These rocket pods I'm using are mixed type. So they have a certain amount of rockets in the zone in that pod. And in another zone on that same pod, you will have a different amount of a different warhead. Right, let's unaction the rocket and let's action the missiles as our final symbology. This is a bit more complex. So the first thing to understand is that there are two main modes here. There is a mode with relevance to radar guided missiles which is what we've got selected at the moment. We can also change that by pressing this button here. Instead of RF, it will be SAL, and that will change to the laser guided variants. Now, whether I can click on this or not depends on the particular site selected. I currently have fire control radar, so it will only allow me to select the radar missiles, which is completely uh, obvious. If I were to change my site selected to HMD, it will change and I've now got SAL selected. I'm now in the mode for the laser guided variant of the missile and I will have that selected. Let's go back to the fire control radar as my selected site. So with the radar guided variant of the missile selected, let's have a look at some options first. And this is important to understand. The radar guided variant of the missile doesn't just stay on and powered on all the time. It can't do that. And so we have to manage how various radar missiles on our aircraft are going to be powered on. I've got all auto and none. Probably best if I bring in Matrix to explain this. Yeah, the uh, radar version of this missile consumes more power and is more prone to overheating. So in auto mode, which you've got selected at the moment, the system will automatically power missiles on and off to ensure that you have a certain amount ready to fire at a moment's notice. Depending on how many radar hellfires you've got uh, loaded with full set of 16, I think it's four missiles that are held ready to fire. If you're down to four missiles loaded, you get two ready to fire, as in this case. What the system will do is it'll power those missiles off and it'll power another set on automatically to make sure you don't get an overheat. If you want to ripple off a load of missiles really quickly, as you would with the FCR, you can select all and all of the missiles will be powered on. You can see the, the two that are powered off have come onto standby and they've gone to ready now. So they take a few seconds to power up. If you go to none, they'll all be turned off and you can't fire any of them until you go back to auto or all. We have a lock on before launch inhibit. This type of missile can lock onto its target before or after launch. And if you want to inhibit a lock on before launch method, you can do it there. Second target inhibit is currently selectable but not modelled in game. Right, uh, this option up here we've talked about. We also have a mode with regards to the radar guided variant of the Hellfire. We have normal and we have manual. In normal, the management of the missiles is automatic in terms of the powering that we talked about, in terms of selecting which missile is to be fired and so on. If you want them to be managed completely by you and you have some switchology to do that, you can go to manual. But we've never found a reason to do that, so we're basically going to ignore that and leave it uh, on normal at all points. I stand to be corrected. Next, we're going to switch over to the laser-guided variants of the Hellfire. So if I go and select my HMD as my site, it now puts us through to the laser-guided variants. Uh, I should say an example of how I could use this switch here to change between the two is if my selected site was in, for instance, TADS, uh, which I'm not going to do now, but then I would have this ability to press this switch here and I could change between, cycle between the two variants. Uh, that way. Uh, maybe now is a good time to look at the symbology viewers. So we have the symbologies for the radar guided variant there and the laser guided variant here. So hollow with an L in the middle means that a SAL, which just means a laser guided missile, is loaded onto the rail. If it's solid like so, then we are in the missile format of the screen and or we have that weapon actioned. If it's hollow, in this case, we've got an A and an R, white and flashing. It means that it's the next to be fired. Also, A means that's the laser code assigned and R means it's ready to fire. In this case, an L and an S means that no laser code has been assigned to that missile. Otherwise, it's in standby status. A and R again, solid field, means that laser code A selected and it's in ready status, ready to fire. And finally, 
A and T. It has laser code A assigned and the missile is in tracking status. Regards the radar empty and RF missile is loaded solid means that again we are in the missile weapon page and or have that weapon wazzed and selected. Hollow flashing it's the next one to be fired with R as the ready status again. Green and S the missile is in standby while it's performing its tests. Uh, solid and R, it's powered and is ready to be fired. White format, it's the next missile to be fired and is in tracking status. And finally, missile is powered and indicating it is in an over temperature status. So we talked about that earlier before with the power management. Uh, right, it's probably best if we skip over to the left here. We have the ability to set our primary and our alternate laser channels. Why would you have multiple laser channels? Well, what if, for instance, you want to fire multiple missiles off at different laser codes? In a short space of time, you might want the ability to have several different laser codes ready to be used. In this case, we have a primary and an alternate. We can change which is assigned to each of those. Primary, we have four different channels to choose from, which we can set up and we'll look at that in a minute. Channel one, two, three, or four. We cannot set it to the same one as the alternate, which is why it shows alternate there or none. Again, with the alternate, we can change to either of the four channels, one, two, three, four, or none. Again, it can't be the same as the primary. This option here allows us to choose between the sub-variant of the laser-guided missile that currently is not modelled. With regards to how these primary and alternating laser codes are going to be used, we have this guy here. Uh, I don't want to delve into this too much because this is not a missile tutorial, but if I were to have it set to ripple here what that means is as each missile is fired it will alternate between the primary and the alternating laser codes uh, ripple is up for obviously sending out multiple missiles relatively quickly in normal mode here it means that all missiles sent out will be on the same code which will be the priority code and we have a manual option as well uh, more detail will be given in obviously weapons tutorials we can also adjust the trajectory of the missile a direct a low or a high trajectory and again that will be covered in proper detail in a video of more relevance with regards to the channels we've chosen up here i forgot to say but they are also displayed down in this box with primary showing in a white box and alternate in a green box uh, i think finally on this page we have missile counter countermeasures i don't know what that is but as the time of making this video you can turn it on and off but it doesn't do anything according to the user manual uh, right next is manual ranging here currently defaulted to a manual range calculation of 1.5 kilometers 1500 meters and we can change that by clicking on it and going to the keyboard unit here and changing it to say 500 meters now i need to show you what that actually does so uh let me turn on my iHads. let me waz my gun and let me fire my gun over here watch the accuracy look it's way off and that's because it's calculating the range for 500 meters so it'd only be accurate at 500 meters to be honest i don't actually know why you would have anything other than automatic mode which we can put in so if i went there and when A and when enter, it's now in an automatic mode that calculates the range you are looking at via various onboard sensors. So if you look down here, I should have said it now shows automatic and that will move with where I'm looking at. And now if I fire, it will be accurate, relatively accurate. Yeah, right on the nuts there. Uh, like I said, I only use automatic. If you know a situation where you'd want to use manual, please let me know. Possibly operating in mountainous terrain. So where elevation changes are involved, you're saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, okay, well, yep, fine. Uh, we need to move on to the sub-pages up here, viewers. We've got channel, ASC. ASC we'll ignore because we've covered that in a separate video. We've got code, we've got coordinate, uh, and we've got util. Channel allows us to set up our four channels relevant to our missiles. We'll come back to that. Code allows us to directly set up the code associated with our laser spot track and our laser ranger finder and designator, which has a sub page of frequency here. Coordinate has a inventory of targets and threats, and we'll cover that in a separate video. I don't even really know why it's in the weapons page. And Util uh, allows us to set some more weapons parameters up. So let's start with channel. You remember I said we have four preset channels. Here they are, one, two, three, and four. With each channel, we can select a certain laser frequency. Laser, like radar, 
operate in frequencies. Currently, we have channel 1 selected and code A at 1688, I think it's megahertz, but it's basically the frequency of the laser. Of oh, repetition frequency. Uh, Two allows us to, and we can change it obviously, we can change it between A and R and some letters are missed out. Uh, let's just put it back to B, three and four. So we can change those as necessary. Note, if you're operating with other Apaches, you're going to have to deconflict. You don't want to be using the same codes out of there and into code. If we wanted to directly change the, as Matrix said, PRF, pulse repetition frequency of either our laser spot tracker, our detection system, or our laser range finder and detector here, all part of our TADS system. Simple, you just click on the same thing. I want it on C, I want it on F, I want it on J, whatever. And LST, I want it on PAPA. This box in the middle we'll come back to. In fact, we'll go straight to it because we can change those frequencies. So, for instance, A is set up as 1688. Well, I want to change it to a bespoke frequency because I want extra frequencies. So, obviously, just click it there. Lasers only work in certain frequency bands and you can see the bands there. So, I want to change it to 1111. Enter. It's now 1111 and that will follow through here. A is now 1111. And channel A is now 1111. Um, next is, and lastly I should say, is the util page here. This allows us to power on and off certain items. So our uh, helmet mounted display or our eye hands on and off. Our RFI, it's a detection part of the mast mounted assembly or the fire control radar. A radar frequency interferometer. It's a radar detection system, currently not implemented, but we'll turn it on and off there. Our fire control radar, we can turn it on and off there. When you turn it back on, uh, I shouldn't have done that because it takes a while to start up, but it will carry on starting up. Our pin vis on one of our night detection systems, we can turn it on and off there. Uh, electro optical counter countermeasures is really interesting and I'm not smart enough to go through it. Uh, it's not modeled at the moment, but we can have filters or leave it clear. Queuing, I've never understood this one, but if you remember on our iHands, if I turn it on, you can see that dotted cross there. That is where the uh, front seater has his sensor. Oh, it's basically where he's looking at. That's near enough for now. Uh, we can remove that option there and have that turned off. Why you would ever want that? beggar's belief but you can do that uh next we have launch arm here uh possibly of no relevance to us in dcs but what it means is that when the ground crew are loading weapons onto the aircraft they may choose to safe it manually from the outside that's an obvious thing to do in which case it will be boxed here and i could unbox it here to rearm the weapons Regards our fire control radar, it's by default in a stowed condition facing backwards. I can unstow it if I want, but you don't need to because when you start using it, it will unstow itself already. Regards our weapons pylons on our wings, we can ground stow them for ground servicing. It makes sure they're aimed forwards and slightly down. Uh, in DCS, I don't think you have to remember to do that. Regards our mast mounted assembly or fire control radar assembly, we can change something here. It's currently not modeled, so we won't worry about it. We have a load sub screen here. According to the manual, it's not working at the moment or not implemented at the moment, but bearing in mind that we will be able to do something with that page in the short future. We can manually power on and off the rockets, missiles and guns here. And note that when I go back to this page, they're disappeared because they're not powered on. Let's put them back. Uh, one more thing I can think of viewers which is that if I went through to the front seater and I went to the same page uh, util we get some extra options obviously because the front guy has control of extra sensors. Our tads we can stow there. Our laser we can unpower our flur we can unpower and our tads sensor we can unpower that viewers is the best i can do to cover the weapons page and its various sub pages without going into super duper detail i hope that was useful and bye